welcome to Wednesday Live Coffee Talk Show. I'm Michelle Kui. I'm a confidence and leadership coach, and I work with negative self-talkers. So today, I am delighted. Hopefully, you brought your coffee. Maybe you had a big jug of coffee because we all went through a emotional roller coaster from last night, and maybe you're still in bed watching me live, live streaming here. And so today is very timely. And this is very funny because I scheduled this coffee talk uh, months ahead of time, not thinking about what topic I want to talk about, um, what topic my guests would be talking about. This is kind of a go with the flow kind of thing. And a couple of days ago, um, my, my guest speaker, Joanne Clune, had reached out to me and said, well, what should we talk about? I said, why not talk about election? Why not talk about leadership? And this is a topic that I think is very timely and I think you're going to have a great time. And by the way, this is nothing political. Um, so join me today is my guest, Joanne, uh, Joan Clune. Um, she is my fellow IPAC coach, and I met her through a live module at the training. Um, Joan is an independent training consultant and certified professional coach. Joan has more than 30 years of government experience, mostly in the code enforcement field, where she worked to, deep, to keep communication functions safe and beautiful. Joan specializes in promoting peace and communication between individuals, team, and organization. She excelled in teaching self-leadership, team leadership, and organization leadership. Joan's passion is to help others to find the light within and to give them permission to let that light shine for all, everyone to see. Her lifelong uh, mission is to make the world a better place, which, oh my gosh, we all need that right now, one person at a time one light at a time. So without further ado, I'd like to bring on my guest, Joan Klin. Hi, Joan. Long time no see. Oh my gosh. Hi, Michelle. I'm so excited to be here and to see you. We had such a great time when we were teachers together at IPEC, assistant teachers. We had a wonderful time. Yeah, I remember sitting next to each other and we were all joking in the back. And I remember Daniel, Daniel was our uh, lead trainer on that, uh, during that mod, mod training. And we were just having a great time. The, like the three of us were just hanging out in the back. The four of us actually, uh, Ron, Ron was uh, another um, assistant trainer. Mm -hmm. So leadership, oh my gosh, have, did you stay up late last night? You know, here's the thing, like I, I kind of call myself like apolitical. I don't, it's too much for my, my energy and my soul, all the negativity. So I basically stay away from it. Mm -hmm. And so then when I was watching last night, I tried my best not to watch till like right before I went to bed. And um, the indecision, the ambiguity, the what if, um, I started to feel and started to feel really um, nervous and concerned. Um, no matter who wins the election, and um, so it's still out. The jury's still out right at, right now at uh, eight o'clock on um, Pacific time, and um, I got really uneasy. I got like restless. I was irritable. I was discontented. And I reached out to a couple people and um, I just was thankful that I hadn't felt that. That's what people were feeling the whole entire like months, maybe even year up to this. Mm -hmm. So I was happy that I only had to feel it a little bit last night. And, and then, it, then it brought me back to um, my main focus in coaching is self-leadership. So how is Joan going to be different today? no matter how the, the election turns out. Mm -hmm. And the answer is, I'm gonna be the same. I'm still gonna be kind and loving and helpful and, and um, to all people. So then it reminded me of um, people say tolerate each other, tolerate somebody who has different views. And I just can't stand that word tolerate. Tolerate is like, you know, it's, it leaves a horrible taste in my mouth. Like, yeah, I'm going to put up with you, mm -hmm. but I still like secretly disdain you or even hate you. 
if I tolerate. And I think tolerate is really bad for our nervous system and our um, all the hormones that are trying to keep us healthy inside our body. Mm -hmm. So I kind of look more toward acceptance because here's something someone told me years ago and that I follow and people and feel free to argue with me about it. And your listeners can too. Um, if I'm intolerant of the intolerant, aren't I intolerant? That's a very philosophical question. <laughs> Right, right. So it's like when I really put my position myself in the position of judging yeah. that I know why someone did what they did. Um, I need to turn the tables on myself and to just say, how can I bring love and kindness to the world today? And then it reminded me a lot of um, this morning I was thinking about, you know, what we we're going to talk about and um, mm -hmm. I'm just starting to study um, self-compassion. Yeah. Um, they have a class out of Stanford that I took and um, Kristen Neff is one of the founders or one of the main people. And there's a part of it, there is a meditation and I can certainly send you this for your listeners and you could post it, but mm -hmm. it's, called just, it's called Just Like Me. So when I'm trying to have compassion, especially for people that I don't, first of all, I have to have compassion for myself. Usually when I'm irritated with other people, I really have something inside I need to look at. But the meditation practice, meditative practice is about just like me, that person has to, and then you, they give you prompts. Just like me, that person um, has had disappointment in their life. Just yeah. like me, that person has had hardship. And so um, it, 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 it kind of takes you down off of the anger and into the, the acceptance. Not, so I'm just trying to say accept and not tolerate. Mm -hmm. I, I think one of the things that I really love what you just said is about that self-leadership. And I think going, watching, having to watch the whole uh, election unfold last night, I could see how easily that we get drawn into the outcome. Like we, we all had our own belief. We all have our, you know, uh, whether you have a uh, political uh, democratic belonging or Republican belonging, there's that sense of I am attached to something and I am, I am attached to an identity. And as you're watching these type of events and as things unfold, it's very easily to get distracted and lose your own self-identity. And I think that was, uh, that was the, the, the things that was very noticeable to me that people are starting to lose their self-identity, knowing and recognizing, remembering who they are, and instead, they're so attached to the outcome of the election result. Who is going to be my president? Who is not you know, qualified to be my president? There's that whole division of, of what is it about the, the outside world? But you know, I, I think this is a perfect time to bring everyone back to that self-identity and talk about that self-leadership. So what is self-leadership? It's very simple and very complicated. It's about what can I personally change? What about me can I change? Not about out there. Some people say like you take a hula hoop and put it over, over yourself. And that's like your circle of influence. That's what I can personally change. My attitude, um, my exercise, what I eat, um, the books I read, the people I interact with. And then I believe that as I improve myself of who I am and I become come more from a loving kindness place, um, it has ripple effects. And it just affects so many other people. And um, that's what we need. We just need, I'm, I'm a very center, center person. I go a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left at times, but I'm mostly can see both sides of pretty much any situation. And so people that are far to the right or far to the left, they scare me. But 
it's really crazy that people that are far to the right think I am and they'll talk to me uh, blatant, you know, blatantly about what their beliefs are. And then people far to the left think I'm also far to the left. So they tell me their views. So I always have like these two different views of someone saying, did you know that, 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 that? Did you know that, 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 that? Because people on across the spectrum talk to me about um, their feelings about those kind of things. Yeah. So self-leadership is looking at what can I change at this moment about myself? It's the only thing I can change. And that basically is my coaching philosophy. I created this coaching philosophy that I call pies. Mm -hmm. What is and, pies? Um, pies is um, something I like to eat. No. Um, <laughs> it's my uh, favorite. My pumpkin pie. I was looking for pumpkin pie last night. Right? And with a lot of whipped cream. Oh my gosh, you and I need to sit together. Where's the best uh -huh. pie on the West Coast? No kidding, I do not know, I do not know. But here's my philosophy behind me and um, I don't think you're gonna be able to see it too well, but the P stands for permission to be great is granted. Meaning that, um, well, if we go back to the election, I'm giving you permission to think and do and feel and be anybody you want to be. Any Anybody you wanna vote for, do it. You know, I, I don't, we have been told so many times, Michelle, in our lives, what we can't do. Mm -hmm. And we haven't really been told what we can do or encouraged. Most of us, you know, you'll see somebody who had great parents and had a great upbringing and, and they had mentors and coaches from an early age. And that's usually not true. We're usually told in the, still in the P permission, you know, for me, don't be a show off. Don't be so loud. Don't make others feel bad. Don't, 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 don't. So you interpret it as just don't be, don't be you. I don't know who Joan's supposed to be, but that's not what we need. Mm -hmm. So that was a message that I, and a lot of people have received. So we're just trying to change it. Am I worthy? Can I do it? I have this crazy dream of being an astronaut say. To be. To be. And well, it comes with risks, right? If I come from a, um, a family who doesn't believe in education and I become an astronaut, it's gonna be, there's gonna be some consequences. So to give people the permission to follow their own dreams. Um, the I stands for imperfection is encouraged, which means that um, we're gonna make mistakes. We're gonna, you're gonna make mistakes, I'm gonna make mistakes, and we just have to get up one more time than we fall down. So if you're trying to be perfect, if perfection um, is preventing you from moving forward, try being imperfect. Just try a little exercise on um, how it's not perfect. Something wasn't perfect. And see that if the be world- a, That would be a big challenge for me because you know I strive for being perfect. <laughs> <laughs> do you? I, I do. I, I, I try to make everything um, plan out ahead of, ahead of times, making sure that I tie all the loose ends before I roll out something. So I know I noticed for myself in the past, I would really get stuck on um, what if it's not perfect? What if it's not, you know, what if I fail? What if, you know, people are not signing up to the program? What do I do? So I, I plan a lot in my head. And that's all coming back from, you know, it's just being perfect. I want it to be perfect when it's out there. I want it to be a perfect product or a perfect service or a perfect paragraph that I have written. So that perfectionism plays a big role. Yeah. And if you were my client, I would ju just, we would just dive into what does perfection mean to you? What does it look like? You know, so um, I tell people strive for excellence, not perfection. And then I also point out, I also give people certain um, TED Talks where the speaker had a great message, but the speaker was not great. And like, I don't wanna call anybody out on your live show, but there's a, one woman that I just love who's one of the top, top, top TED Talks. And um, she constantly is going, and um, it looks like she needs a glass of water. It looks like her mouth is really dry and, and she just kind of is constantly going and um, and uh, and uh. I'm like, look at this. You don't, you probably have not even noticed it. You have probably seen this video and not noticed it. So 
she's imperfect, you can be imperfect. So, so um, I was actually talking to someone about that because, you know, <clears throat> going through my speaker speaker journey, I, I went in and started uh, Toastmasters. And, and one of the role at Toastmasters as a Toastmasters is that all culture. And nowadays, you know, my perfectionism will kick in every time I listen to someone speaking on the live show or anywhere, you know, on TED Talk. When I'm sitting there and I'm listening to someone, I'm doing the all team. How many all's totally, did totally, that person totally. use? Totally. You know, Toastmasters is, Toastmasters is going to ruin your life. It does because it creates I know, I'm joking. Blocks. I'm totally joking. I'm totally joking. Well, you know, what's interesting, what I work with, um, with some of my clients that have a perfection issue, we do the, um, we do the um, table topics questions. You know how on tape, Toastmasters, they ask you a question. Like, you have to yeah. impromptu extemporaneous speaking and so we um we i just go okay here's today's question and they have to talk for a minute no more than two minutes and um it helps that part of toastmasters i refer people to toastmasters all the time all the time yeah <clears throat> so oh, yeah. i became a natural uh awe counter every time i watch a live video how many odd did they use how many uh you know double crutches did they use <laughs> How many pregnant pauses? Yeah, I, and I feel the same with my career as a code enforcement officer with local government. Um, what we do is we enforce planning, building, zoning, land use codes. Basically, neighbors complain about each other. So I can't drive anywhere without seeing graffiti, without seeing overgrown weeds, without seeing um, cars parked in the front yard. Like it's just like it just has totally tweaked my brain. Mm -hmm. I'll go. There's a code. There's a code violation. Yeah. So and it's a miracle how the how these awareness it brings to our awareness and and I know you you would agree with me on this because a lot of what we do as coaches is creating that awareness if someone never pointed out that you know there's a lot of awe and you know that you've been using you would never have noticed that this is nope. what you're doing. Mm -mm. Yeah. Well you know what I I call that the cycle of change which is um you have to tell me how we are on time and when we're going to wrap up and stuff. But the cycle, of, the cycle of change is about, I unconsciously do this. I unconsciously, usually I, usually I use the example, which I actually have done is uh, clicking my pen. Guilty. Right? <laughs> right. So I, so I'm, I clicked my pen. I've done it forever. No one has said anything to it. And I don't even really hear it. I don't even, but it's driving someone else crazy. It's driving many other people crazy. And finally, someone says to me, someone puts their hand on my hand like, okay, stop. Or they say, you know, you click your pen a lot. So I had unconscious inappropriate behavior. The words can be changed to whatever you want. Unconsciously, I was clicking the pen. And then someone brings it to my attention. So now I'm at the meeting and I go, Oh my God, it's true. So now I'm conscious of my, the behavior I'm gonna uh, change. And then the next level is that I consciously try to change it. I either, I either don't bring this pen or I get pens that, you know, they have the top. So yeah. I can't click it. I, with a cap. Right. Yeah, the you're cap. trying to yeah. you have a cap it. So I can't click it, so I can't click it. And then one day, I'm in a meeting and I have my click pen and I'm not even clicking it. So it starts with someone bringing it to your attention, you investigating, oh my gosh, I actually do that. That would be so annoying. I'm gonna try not to do it. And then you get to the level of um, I'm not doing it. So change takes time mm -hmm. and persistence and coming from a, a position of curiosity. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm pretty much a doubter. Like I don't do that. I don't click my pen. I might've been doing it today, but I don't have, I don't do that all the time. And then I go to the next meeting. Boop, 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 boop. Uh Oh, shoot. Yeah. Anyway, back to my pie. So I tell people shoot for excellence, not perfection. Important. Yeah. 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 Well, if I'm a perfectionist, nothing is ever going to be perfect. Perfect is a lie. I've learned through my own journey that perf 
perfection is a lie because you could never be perfect. So why, why live in a lie? You don't need to be perfect, period. And you know what I want to comment on that? Where perfection shows up in my life is in procrastination. Mm -hmm. So there's a saying that says, perfection leads to procrastination, leads to paralysis. Yeah. And so I never consider myself a, a perfectionist because I clutter, I have clutter and I'm disorganized. But the thing is, if I really examine it, I want it to be perfect. And so I don't start and I don't know how to make it perfect. So I just don't start. I put it off and then I become power, paralyzed as the pile grows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Um, e stands for eyes on self. E stands for eyes on self, which means um, just stop comparing yourself to everyone else. Well, I'm going to work with you on that because it's difficult because we've done it our whole lives. And now, see, I'm older. I grew up without the internet and all that. But now it's just so hard to, you know, I have the world, the entire world right here in my hand. And I'm looking at these people and I think I really believe that's their lives and that they didn't you know I don't take the time to consider that they took 50 pictures to get that one picture or you know like we all do hey I'm looking good today my hair looks good my makeup looks good take a picture of me it's yeah. not you know it's not real so what are your you want to be an astronaut let's let's work on being an astronaut What's one of the first steps you have to do? And don't worry about what the naysayers and things people are saying. And to just keep your eyes on yourself, eyes on the prize, keep taking a step forward, a step forward, a step forward. And lastly, I, I think that's a, that's a, so eyes on the self, it's a very challenging thing for a lot of people to do because there's a lot of so, you know, shiny objects out there. Um, you know, I want to, because we all talk about being that ideal person and that ideal person to me looks like someone who is really well put together. So a lot of time it's rather difficult, you know, even though we have that conscious consciousness of keeping focus on myself. But when I look at other people, I wonder if I could do all that. So there's that self-doubt, that self, um, you know, that, that self-talk start kicking in, like I'm a doubter. Which is, which is crazy that we all have it. So just awareness is the first step. Yeah. So I'm doubting myself right now, talking to you. Like, why does Michelle have it? Why don't I have a, why don't I have a show? Why don't I get my act together and get a show? And then I'm looking at this picture of myself, which I use all the time. And I'm like, wow, my face looks really red. Wow, I need to get a new picture. I mean, we're constantly, we're constantly, you know, self-flagellating, constantly beating ourselves up to, to, no, to no avail, to no avail. But um, yeah. yeah. And it's, you look perfect. Of course it's hard. You look perfect, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on your picture. I love that picture. This is a great picture. I love that picture. I, I loved it till I saw it right now today. But I'm, I'm going to, I've been so inspired by your pictures. Oh my God, your pictures are amazing. Is so that, again, it's like, like 50, taking 50, 50 shots in order to get one per perfect. <laughs> right? Yeah. But you have all these different locations and like, did you go back again and again and again? No. So one of the things that I, I discovered through my journey is that every, every little experience in your life will count. And one of my experiences in the past before I became a coach was I have this huge passion for photography. So I would go around in, in town, no matter where I am, you know, San Francisco, Los Angeles, I would just drive, get into my car, I would just drive around town to see like what would be a photogenic spot for me to take pictures. And so like a lot of these experience, all these uh, uh, graphic design, all these photography skills, they all came from my life experience because I took time to learn it. 
And at some point, you know, I thought I was going to be a photographer, which I didn't turn into a photographer, but that skills remain stay with me. And this is something that I keep telling people, you know, it's not about who you want to become. It's about who you have been and all these little tiny skills that you have picked up. Those are your inner strength. Those are the things that you will carry into your future to be successful. These are the same skills that you've been using all your lifetime. What did I say that you? (laughs) I'm going to write this down. It's not and let me see if I get this. We'll have to replay the tape. We're going to have to replay this because <laughs> it just blurred out. You know what? People do the same thing for me that they go, oh my God, that's amazing. And they write it down and I go, what did I say? What did I say? And then I want to eventually have a thing on LinkedIn where I, you know, I have, instead of saying <clears throat> the quote by Michelle Obama, I want to say, that was what I said. Those, those words came out of my mouth. So what you said, it's not about who we're going to be. It's who we have been. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not about who you want to become. Yes, that's important, but you can't neglect all the experiences that you have carried with you. The fact that you are here today, it means that something that we did well, something that we did right, right? And life is hard. Life is difficult. Let's face it. And the fact that you are here, it means that you did something right. So continue to do something right. What did you do to get you here? And this is why I started the show, because I think we all have our story. We all have a journey from the past that make us become who we are today. Without those experiences, without those past, you know, life is just a piece of blank paper. You start from zero. Right. And you're never starting from zero. You don't start from zero. You never start from zero. Oh my God, this is profound for me today. You never start, you never start from zero. I'm going to give you that credit too on LinkedIn. Oh, thank um, you. Um, and then I just want to bring it back to your yes. photography. Your photography, you gave yourself permission to do it. I'm going to go into the city. I'm going to park wherever I find a parking space. I'm going to start taking pictures, right? No matter what people say. And then you, 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 you had to have pictures that were like, what the heck was I thinking? Right. For sure. Yeah. It was a process. It was a process of getting better as a photographer. And then you kept your eyes on self. Like, okay, people might be looking at me. Like, what is she doing? Taking a pic? What is she doing? Laying on the ground, taking a picture. But, um, (laughs) You kept doing doing it. Yep. So it's, yeah, it's, it's all these story. skills brought me here. When exactly. people are looking at the photography, when people are looking at the photo, you know, I, I communicate a lot. So I have a, a, a personal photographer I work with. Um, she's great. She's amazing, by the way. And so every time we have a session together, I would, I would ask her, you know, so what do you think about this idea? What do you think about that idea? And, and here's some places that we can go to. What do you think about this? So, so there's a lot of feedbacks and working together and using my skills from the past. Okay. So she, so you do go to different places. I was like, my gosh, there's a new couch. Oh my gosh, look at that lamp. Oh my gosh, look at how that pillow matches perfectly. It's like, they're so in all their different, you're standing, you're sitting, you're speaking, you're everything. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of communication with, um, you know, working in a team. Well, I'm sure that's, that comes up to my next um, letter, but I'm sure she appreciates it. She's a, she became a good friend of mine. Um, her yeah. name is Lauren, Lauren Combs. She's a, she's a singer. She's a, she also um, sing at a church. She, she's amazing. Lauren Combs. And she's in the Bay Area? No, she's in the, she's in Southern California. She's here in Torrance. Oh, in Torrance. Okay. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Nice. Come down, visit me, visit me. And then we can all do a photo shoot together. Oh, I would love that. I would love that. I was actually thinking as we were talking um, that uh, it would be great to see us on stage together because I am so incredibly tall. And um, I, I tend to have friends that are not as tall as me. And so it would be cool. That would be really cool to be on stage with you. Wouldn't it be? It would be a per- picture perfect day, you know? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So before we go, I want to finish up one, and you just started it. So S is support system creation. That means that we are social animals and that we, we, um, 
we need support. We don't, we don't thrive in aloneness. And um, so you were saying that. So you found her, you started um, telling her, I think about this, how about this, how about this? And then you formed a relationship with her. Yeah, I feel like, is our time up? No, 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 not at all. We still got, we can wrap it up in about 10, 10 minutes. Uh, before I let you go, though, because I think it's really important to to tie back, to circle back in terms of this whole election things. So mm -hmm. looking at this current situation, and I know a lot of people are still going through that roller coaster, emotional roller coaster this morning when they wake up. So how do we apply all these principles to get us back on track and recognizing our our own true self? and seeing our own light. I would really concentrate on eyes on self. How am I gonna show up in the world today? Am I gonna bring love and kindness and acceptance? Or am I only gonna talk about the horribleness or the, of the election or the ambiguity of our future? And, um, be present with compassion and self-love and imperfection. And that I don't have to, I don't have to hate anyone. I don't have to. I personally cannot do it. The, the energy in my body, I, can't, I cannot hate. I have to, I, I might for a while, but I have to get to forgiveness. So I, that's kind of why I've avoided, I stopped watching the news long before it was cool to not watch the news uh -huh. because I can't handle all the negativity. What, to me, what you focus on grows. So if I'm walking down the street, if there's two people walking down the street and one person is saying, man, look at all the trash. And I'm going, man, look at these flowers. Boy, I've never seen these flowers before. Check this flower out. It's like what you focus on grows. Not to the point of denial. I mean, still be involved and still make what what I love about the current situation is that, again, support system creation, people are finding support where they need to. Mm -hmm. And I can surround myself by all the people that believe like I believe. And that seems like a very comfortable, wonderful place to be. Mm -hmm. And it's very small as opposed to just approaching it with curiosity and compassion. I mean, I know people in, that have been in prison for horrendous things and I still love them. I know people that have done all kinds of things and I find a place to love them, to not judge. Because in the compassion um, study, in the compassion training, it talks about that could be me. I could have done that. Like you're saying, Michelle, like you're saying about all the things um, that, ha that have been make me who I am today. Mm -hmm. We all have different have beens. But we, what we have in common is the ambiguity of the future. And ambiguity is, that's something I coach my clients on all the time. If you want to be a good leader, you're gonna have to deal with ambiguity. It's just not clear. The path is often not clear. And so to, um, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna show up? So I wanna give you permission, your listeners permission to say that I really can't talk about the election today. I really don't wanna talk about this. When I'm in a place where people are bantering back and forth on both sides about how horrible the other side is, I physically remove myself. Mm -hmm. I'll go get a drink or go get a cup of tea or go to the restroom. I'll be like, I'm just gonna, I don't even say anything. I just get up and like, I can't be involved in all this negativity. I can't, I can't do it. Now, some people can, so good for them. They're stronger than me, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I'm much, weaker and sensitive than other people. However, I want to tell you that in weakness, there is strength. By me saying, 
I can't handle it. And turning off the news years ago, um, that protects me. That helps me be more present for you in our relationship because I don't have all this, this energy that's just bantering around and literally killing me, literally messing up my cells and making me sick and yeah. So. I think one of the biggest thing that I picked up from, from as you're describing it, you know, a couple of words that came to my head, um, the words include acceptance, accepting for what is, and without judgment, um, acceptance is not really just, you know what, throw my, throw my hands up, throw my tower and just give up. Acceptance is really about, you know, just accepting for the things as it, as it is without any judgment, without putting any labels or attachment to it. And, and back to the eyes on me, you don't have to be perfect and we don't live in a perfect world. So why force yourself to be perfect why force yourself to live in certain ways and giving yourself permissions to practice that self-compassion, giving yourself that kindness that we all, everyone deserves. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about what you're currently offering in case people need help or support would be a better word. Well, I love to work with um, first time super supervisors and managers. I love to work with people that are open-minded and teachable, that um, have curiosity. And so I, I just work, I mean, like I have such a very varied um, clientele. I have scientists, I have um, uh, people in transition, I have um, people in government, you know, I, I just have um, such a variety. What I'm currently working on is um, group coaching. I want to do group coaching. I've always wanted to be in front of a crowd. And so I'm going to get ready to be in front of a crowd when we get back to be in front of crowds, which who knows how many years away that is. But um, so I'm working on group coaching and I have this process that I take leaders through, which is, which I call um, writing your leadership legacy story, which means who are you as a leader? So again, eyes on self, I have to look at myself. So we go through values. What are your values? We go through, are you visual, kinesthetic or auditory? We go through a lot of things like that seem random and odd, like are you a morning person or an afternoon person? So that, you look like you're going to say something. I was going to say, I'm definitely a morning person. <laughs> really? Okay. I am totally not a morning person. I want to be. See, this is another self-judgment because everything that you read, everything you read says all the successful people are morning people. Everything. There's not a book that says, you know what? Us late us late sleepers, we do great. Nope, it's all about, you gotta get up early, you gotta get up early, you gotta get up early. So maybe Actually, one of these- there is a book that talk about the late, late bloomers. And, and oh, yeah? talk about, yeah, yeah. I, I gotta send you the, the link to it because it actually talk about how you don't have to fit into that cycle of, uh, of operation. So you can actually be a late comer, late bloomer, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, during late, later time of the day and you function, you are more productive in the later half of the day or even late at night. Cause there's a lot of people, uh, you know they actually push through the night and they're working functionally perfectly and they're more productive than, than compared to the morning person so there's a, actually a book that I'll, I'll send you i'll send it okay. to you all right all right awesome <laughs> yeah okay so so where can people find you oh and then i also wanted to say i'm working on a book on my pies i want to uh right now i'm working on on a course on mm -hmm. the leadership legacy story so at the end you have <clears throat> you know i know who i am and i tell you who i am one of the drawbacks of managers and leaders is that I don't really tell you my expectations. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. I work in a, a you know, corporation uh, type of environment. So yes, yes. 
And, and that was something that I was struggling. I would like to know what is your expectation of me so that I can know where I stand, how do I perform to meet your expectation. And I noticed that a lot of um, upcoming or uprising management or um, people, they don't know leadership teams. They, they're not aware that this is something that I, I have to express clearly communicated with my staff, what is my expectation? Um, because without that, it's like setting, not setting up a framework of how you're going to work and, and people get confused. So they're going around and trying to figure out things themselves rather than having a framework to, to work towards. Right, and then I'm constantly saying, this isn't at all what I said. Yeah. And then we have this back and forth. Like I had this boss one time and I would, and I said to him, just tell me what you, just tell me what you want and I'll give it to you. Yeah. And he interpreted that as, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm like, it's going to be easier for me. If you just tell me specific, instead of me, I get so frustrated when I bring something back for the third time and you change it back to what we had the first time. I, I go crazy. So just tell me what you want. So I, so anyway, in the leadership legacy story, I tell you what I expect of you. And also here's another thing that's important, what you can expect from me. So that um, in the ones I've done before, like I'll say, you know, I'll go to bat for you. I'll go to bat for you. If you're following, you know, if, if you did not do anything wrong, I'm going to be your strongest advocate. Yeah. Love it. And so then, mm -hmm. and your book, when is that coming I'm, out? I'm hoping next week. I mean, next week. Wouldn't that be nice? No, I haven't even started it. I'm hoping next year. I was at one point hoping by the end of the year, but um, you know, my motivation level goes up and down and up and down and up and down. Yeah. Some, some days I don't get anything done, and some days I get a lot done. So, um, so I switched to getting my course done, and then. Um, I might sign up for a course in January where someone takes you through writing a book. So we'll see. Well, hopefully uh, got... I can motivate you in some way so that we can be on the same stage. Um, okay. Once yeah. Reopen. <laughs> Cause you have your book. I have my book. It's been out since uh, last year. So I'm actually working on my second book. Oh, you are. Yeah. I'm working on my second book and, and it's been, you know, on and off, I'll be honest, you know, some days I'm not motivated or sometimes I just don't have time to sit down and write. So I've been giving myself permission. So going back to your exactly. principle, permission, I've been giving myself permission to, you know what, some days it's, I just don't need to write at all, period. So um, I'm hoping that it's going to come out next year. So yeah, next year would be a perfect, perfect year to uh, host another live event. And we're going to do this live. Because you and okay. I are both on the West Coast. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And then I'm going to contact you after because I have been thinking uh, I wanted to talk to you about your book writing process and publishing and all that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'm, I'm happy to share always. Tell us, tell everyone the name of your book again so they can look it up. Oh, so my first book is called Perfectly Normal, An Immigrant Story of Making It in America. And people can always go to my website to order a copy, and I will uh, personally sign it and send it, ship it out to you. Yeah, so oh, that was my first book. My second book, um, tentatively, I'm calling it A, a Journey of the Inward, uh, the Sacred Land. And that sacred land is really within our heart. So how do we travel inside to our sacred land? Tentatively, that's my book. But that's the premise. Premise, yes, yeah. Which is so related to the first book. Yes, because I think the first book, when the first book came out, you know, I left out a lot of the details on that transformational journey. And that transformational journey was really what got me here in moving forward. So I kind of saw my previous book, my last book as a big, huge letter of completion. You know, I wrote it, completed my past life, 
And now I have a different life that I want to live, that I want to um, strive for. So now it's a perfect time to talk about how that transformational journey brought me and would help me to get moving forward. So, and yeah. and uh, it all comes back to eyes on self. Yeah. Yeah. It all comes back to eyes on self. And that was your journey. And that's how, and you're going to be able to resonate with so many people and not everyone, but a lot need to hear what you have to say. And so just keep your eyes, you know, get your support group. Yeah. I would love to be in your support group. You, you are already in my support group. Okay, okay. <laughs> and I would love to support you okay, by okay. asking you, where can people find you? Um, mostly I'm on LinkedIn. So you can find me Joan Kling on LinkedIn. And then my website is joankling.com. And um, my last name is KL. A lot of people skip the L. So K-L-I-N-G, joankling.com. And then you can reach out to me and we can talk and um, get started on the journey of um, pies. Yes, yes. Yay. And I will have all the information linked to the episode note and also a blog article to share with everyone. Wow, awesome, awesome. You are amazing, Joan. Thank you. Thank you. I had a wonderful time talking to you. And this, this is just amazing. Thank you so much for coming. I, I think this is a, you know, something that a lot of people need to hear this morning as we moving forward into this uncertainty and, and not knowing you know, what to expect. And, and I think eyes on ourselves is a perfect period to end. <laughs> now, how am I going to present myself in the world today? And with kindness and love, or, I mean, is it necessary that we talk about hardship? Sometimes it is, but sometimes let's, let's get together. And like today I put this, this shirt on, I was like, I like this color. I'm going to wear this. And it just gave me like a little bit of happiness, a little bit of like, oh, okay. I feel better. Little <laughs> baby steps, baby steps on being, being kind to yourself. And then being kind to others. Yeah. Thank you so much, Joan, for coming in. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for watching this week's episode. And join me next week again at 8 o'clock Pacific time as I bring more love, courage, and connection to you on this live Coffee Talk show. I will see everyone next week. Bye.